We've reached the final stretch of Twisted Metal Month and not a moment too soon. Ten years ago, Twisted Metal went dormant. After a full stretch of seven years between Head On and 2012, all that released was a port to the PS2. But the developers at Eat Sleep Play were busy. For three years, the development of a new Twisted Metal game was underway, slowly evolving into the final game we received on the PS3. However, the original scope and direction changed drastically multiple times through development. At one point, the game was supposed to be a post-apocalyptic battleground under the working title Twisted Metal Apocalypse, until Scott Campbell decided that direction wasn't working. Additionally, the scale of the game was going to be much smaller, as the team was aiming for a digital-only PSN release. That is, until Sony took notice of the progress being made on the game. The game once again changed direction and scale to a full-blown release, a multiplayer-only game like MAG, which, due to its reliance on online servers, means every copy is landfill fodder now. Thankfully, Sony came to Eat Sleep Play and said enough people like the Twisted Metal universe that they need to have stories and a dedicated single-player mode. And thus the game that started as a digital-only game turned full-release multiplayer experience now was a full-on Twisted Metal game. At E3 2010, an event deeply etched into my brain, David Jaffe and Scott Campbell emerged from a full-scale creation of Sweet Tooth that drove onto stage for the announcement. The presentation was focused on online play, touting a 16-player deathmatch mode. But here in 2022, none of the online features are accessible as the servers were taken offline in 2018. That doesn't stop Sony from yelling at you about buying an online pass, a gross reminder of some of the worst nickel and diming of that era. What's left is what's on the disc, and what is on the disc is probably the most different Twisted Metal game by far. Calypso returns once again as the head of the Twisted Metal tournament. He seems to be the CEO of a large corporation, and keeps artifacts from previous driver's stories as mementos of his ruination. It's a subtle thing, but seeing his wall of knickknacks, like the potion of Yellow Jacket's drink from the first game's cut ending, or the boxing glove from No Faces Ending in Black, made me think this game was supposed to be a nod to fans of the entire series. The biggest difference, however, is that this time around, only three drivers are playable and their narratives take place over one long story mode. The stories are told via live-action sequences that harken back to the B-movie style and campiness of Twisted Metal 1's cut endings. The three characters you play as are Needles Kane, Mr. Grimm, and Dollface from Twisted Metal Black. Each of the drivers enter the contest for their own specific reason. Needles is a former family man whose dark side took over, urging him to kill his family. His daughter got away, leaving the job unfinished. Her escape taunts him endlessly, and no amount of bloodshed satisfies his rage until he can kill her. His wish is to find her and put an end to his craving once and for all. Mr. Grimm enters the contest to prevent the death of his father, the event that sent his life down a dark path. His father was a stuntman like Evil Knievel and died after botching a stunt. His wish is to go back to the night of the crash and prevent it from happening. Dollface wants to be the most famous supermodel in the world and she will kill anyone in her path. After a car crash leaves her with a scar on her face, she consults a doctor that traps her in a mask. Her wish is to be freed from the mask. The stories are alright, but sometimes they skew onto the edgy side just for the sake of trying to sound cool. My name is Daniel Grimm, and I'm an asshole. That is so hilariously stupid, but overall they were very fun. With only three characters, you might be wondering how there can be more than three vehicles in the game. The way Twisted Metal 2012 worked is completely different than the games that led up to it, and it shakes up gameplay dramatically. In this game, the characters can drive any car of their choosing. At the beginning of the basic deathmatch, you choose three different vehicles as well as the sidearm you want, making it the first game that lets you use something other than machine guns mounted on your car as a secondary weapon. You can use shotguns, SMGs, and RPGs instead, and they all have pros and cons. Many of the classic vehicles return, just without their drivers. Some of them even return with a new coat of paint. In all, there are 17 vehicles you can pilot. The meat wagon reminds me of the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, Roadkill looks like a demolition derby car. During gameplay, if your vehicle gets damaged, you can pick up health like in games past. Most levels have a garage where if the damage is too great, you can swap vehicles while the first one is repaired. 
It never gets any less weird seeing Needle's cane and Axel's wheels. The bulk of Twisted Metal plays out the same. Take out a set number of opponents and move on to the next stage. The arenas are gigantic, like absolutely colossal. The amusement park level has roads that wind up a mountain to a funhouse. The city level is huge with blocks upon blocks of roads with a connected subway system lying beneath it. It also has this ice rink which is the worst part of any Twisted Metal game ever. There are 8 main arenas in the game that make up 30 different maps. Black Rock Stadium is a murder pit of Calypso's own creation complete with electric floors, swinging death balls, and he eventually fills the lower levels with lava. The LA skyline takes place across rooftops and is really reminiscent of Twisted Metal 1, 2, and Black. There is so much variety to the stages that every single one stayed fresh throughout the whole playthrough. Now let's talk about something that's been a make or break for me throughout this whole series, gameplay and the feel of it. The best games provide a certain weight to the vehicles while also letting them turn on a center axis when stopped as part of a quality of life change added in two. At first this game took some getting used to. Cars feel a bit lighter and more hollow than I initially liked, but once I got used to it the game started to feel pretty good. The directional combos for freeze rays, shields, and mines have been simplified by assigning them to individual directions on the D-pad. As you progress through the game you unlock more moves as well. I ended up absolutely loving this game. It's fast paced and its difficulty ramps up evenly as you go through the story. Cars have their own unique specials with alternate special attacks which I realized far too late into the game. I especially loved Mr. Grimm's special which involves setting a chainsaw on fire and launching it at enemies. If you get good with it, you can absolutely obliterate everyone in your path. Just look at this kill spree I was on. All the weapons in the game pack a punch and ramming into other cars feels great. The game is well balanced so that most vehicles are viable options, although for me I lean toward the tankier vehicles paired with the grim motorcycle. Different events require different strategies however. There aren't only death matches in this new game anymore. There are death races that require you to drive as fast as you can to the finish line. If you don't, boom. There are levels where semi-trucks spawn new enemies until you destroy them. There are endurance challenges where you have to crush a specific number of infinitely spawning opponents too. Granted, that doesn't feel entirely distinct from a regular deathmatch. Lastly, the boss fights return in various fashions. In Sweet Tooth's campaign, you fight the Brothers Grimm, two monster trucks that attack you in unison. During Mr. Grimm's chapter, you face down a flying metal doll face, and to bring her down you have to sacrifice other drivers to a grinder and launch a nuke at her. This mode was majorly advertised for the online component of the game, and I can imagine it was a pretty fun change of pace among friends online. But the wildest boss level comes in Dollface's chapter. In order to beat the story mode, you have to ascend this rolling carnival of horrors and destroy the Sweet Tooth creation. Choose the wrong vehicle like I did, and it's a nightmare. But overall, I was hugely impressed by this game. For something that started as a multiplayer-only release, the single-player mode holds up pretty well. My only genuine gripe with it is how few characters there are. I wish there would have been more DLC characters with their own stories to play as, but as far as I can tell there were only two vehicles that were supposed to be extra content, but they were never released. When all was said and done, I loved Twisted Metal 2012. I didn't plan on playing the entire story mode in one sitting, but I did. I wanted to see what happened next the whole time, and I wanted to see what new modes I would be tasked with figuring out. Had there been a more traditional number of characters and stories, I think there could have been an argument that this is one of the best Twisted Metal games in the whole series. But with only three characters to play as, there is very little to do now that I have finished it. I feel like that one sitting showed me all there is to do for the single player mode. There is a split screen mode to play couch co-op battles, but as someone who doesn't get a chance to do that very often, this game doesn't offer me much more. I can imagine though that in the game's heyday I would have played the hell out of it. It's just too bad I'm playing it now and not 10 years ago. I am happy we got to finish Twisted Metal Month on a high note this year after ending it on Twisted Metal 4 last year, the worst game in the series. So what's next? We've covered the whole series now. There can't be more to do next year, right? Oh, wrong. We have a brand new Twisted Metal TV show coming out next year. And do you think this series was the only car combat game in town back in the day? Wrong again. And we get a chance to go back to what the original team at Singletrack was doing in between their split with Sony and the formation of Incog Inc. 
We have a lot of content still on the way, so stay tuned for next year's iteration of Twisted Metal Month. Thank you all so much for watching. This is one of my favorite series to do. And while it was delayed a little bit, and I wanted to do a little bit more than what ended up happening, I still loved every second of playing these games. <laughs>